Double show late night, ball bags. We have yet another illustrious guest. Nothing but illustrious. Yes, tonight we have New York Senator Kristen Gillibrand. No, no. <laughs> that is not who you have. I, I had, show. you know what it was? I knew. You I, gotta I had start a, again. I had a. I had, there was a Kristen in my fourth grade class. Yeah, and I'm not Kristen. Shout out to Kristen. Shout out to Kristen if you're watching this. I'm doing way better than you in life. How much of your life is correcting people on that? I usually say nothing. You, you just sit there and you're just like. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. yeah, especially ones of my colleagues who I've been working with for 10 years. Oh, years. I'm like, Kristen! Kristen! It's like, no. Kristen, like, dunst. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Nobody likes Kristen dunst? No. I, I like Kristen dunst. We like Kristen dunst. Yeah, yeah, like, well, I always aggressively. I don't know. <laughs> I really haven't thought about her. So, I so I'll, I'll tell you. So it's Kirsten. Kirsten, Kirsten like Kier Royale, Kier. Okay. But my husband's English, and he says Kirsten. Kirsten. So if you want to be Kirsten. different, you could say Kirsten, okay. and I would not be angry. Well, tonight we have another serious guest, the New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirsten. to the table, please. <laughs> Wow, this is, this is wild. This, this is, is impressive. Yeah. This is, this is exciting. I feel like I feel like my credit score is going up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? My role for joining us office here. Some. Well, can we run for office or something? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I will help you do it. Can you, what would like, you like to run for? Like Comptroller, because I don't know what it is. Yeah, she's obsessed with Comp. Yeah. Could you tell them what that is? What does the Comptroller do? Well, it's in charge of uh, budgets and money. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm with that. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to be um, do it citywide or statewide? Um, statewide. Statewide. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, know I, I can crunch is. numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean, I got a lot of kids. I, I do budgets pretty well. You okay. know what I'm saying? Well, there. I got TurboTax. There's somebody who's doing the job well now, so um, you Ooh, probably uh, Tom DiNapoli. Shout out to Tom DiNapoli. So, uh, and he's a really nice man. So you don't necessarily want to run against him, but that job will come available. Yeah. Absolutely. Boy, Comptroller 2020, let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got my Excel spreadsheet open ah. right now. <laughs> it's an important job. It's like you get to decide where to invest uh, money and okay. and you can do good things. Like if you want to invest um, and like shoes your, for myself? your values, no. Oh, like okay. I, I've met some um, different controllers around the country who will say, I'm going to invest in minority and women to own funds okay. so that you can you know amplify your voice in a different way. So you can do a lot of good things. And Chris is, Kir, I'm sorry, Kirsten Kirsten. is here to amplify her voice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you gave up cursing. I always, I'm trying. I'm trying. You're trying, How's you're that trying to not curse? It's not going well. I feel like you said darn over there. You were like, oops, yeah. I said darn. I'm Are like, you, bro, you're on the wrong show. You got the wild potty mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. I have bad mouth. Yeah. I really do. And you're working on it? You're just... I mean, you're trying, a trying to be a little more polished. Little trying. More polished. How, you ever, at work, you ever just. Yes. Let it fly, just I like... once uh, said the F word in front of Joe Lieberman, mm -hmm. and he's a, a very conservative mm -hmm. uh, religious yeah. person, and I think he blushed for a full two minutes. Oh, Joe. Uh, something Joe. I haven't seen Joe in a minute. How are you doing, Joe? <laughs> How's your yeah. job? Is it still, do you still enjoy it? Yes, I do. I, I like my job because I get to um, fight for all sorts of issues, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have a lot of access to Washington, and if I can elevate their voices, uh, whether it's you know women and men who have been sexually abused or sexually harassed, whether it's these kids uh, who are really speaking truth to power right now yeah. about gun violence, I can amplify their voice. I can I can create um, solutions where none exist um, when they're really hard problems. Mm. You know, you called out the you've been called the Me Too senator for mm. calling out sexual assault within your own party. Yeah, and, and, just, uh... and just, it's. I've been working on it for about five years. Mm -hmm. I first got uh, focused on what's happening in the military, where women and men are um, sexually assaulted, raped, um, and not many report, but when they do report, they get retaliated against. Yeah. And they're the ones who are blamed, and they're the ones who are kicked out. And there's this protection uh, for the powerful that is unfortunately seen in a lot of institutions. You see it over and over again. Yeah. So you uh, are on Twitter. Yeah. Yes, and you, uh, you, you're you kind of nice at it. I'm working on it. You're working on it. You've been flaming some people on Twitter. I'm trying. You, you tweet your own tweets. You're not, you don't have like a tweeter that tweets for no, you? No, no. Like on your no, own we work on them together and then I approve them. Approve them, okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you, but I don't actually push the button. No? No. You, that, no would emojis. Be that would be dangerous. That would be dangerous. Could be, you know what I'm saying? I would. Drop a couple F-bombs on there. Yeah. Joe Lieberman I, does it, it's like mute, mute, <laughs> mute, mute, mute. When you see, I, if you, 
What's the process for your Twitter? Like, can you just respond or do you have to run it through people? No, I, if I want to tweet about something, mm -hmm. I'll just write the person who's in charge of it. Her name's Margarita, and mm -hmm. I like, I want to tweet about this. Uh, can we get something up on this issue? And she'll quickly draft something. I'll look at it, say, yep, yeah, love it. Is that generally how most politicians work with Twitter? Some or? do it all by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, some people <laughs> I mean, don't do Twitter at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's everybody's different. Is it weird now that that's becoming part of being a politician now, like having a Twitter feed and responding to the president's Twitter? I, I think it's it's a good thing, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Uh, for Part of my job is to advocate for different issues, different positions, and if you can summarize what you're trying to say in just a very short sentence, mm -hmm. um, it's sometimes clear. Right. And so when I'm doing a press conference about a bill that I want to pass and I want to summarize it, I'll put it out in a few tweets. And so any reporter around the state who wants to write about it knows exactly what to look at. Then they can go back and look at the press release and get all the details if they want it. But it's just quick information. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's very helpful for advocacy. Quick and concise, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what Twitter's for. Also, mm -hmm. memes. Yes. Do you use memes at all? Uh, I would like to, I don't really. Uh, you ever, you, ever you, you have memes on deck? No, you I really never roast would like another to. Margarita, we gotta get some memes, Margarita. You never roast yeah, another we're... senator and come and be like, what are those? <laughs> You're not. Now my 14 year old said, mom, you need more memes. Yeah. Like, you're really boring. Yeah, listen, 14 year old, The 14 year old said, can I take over your social media account? I said, yes, you can. Yes. Oh, that'll be, that'll be lit. So someday he's gonna do that. Wait. He'll charge. Did you see your fellow Senator Marco Rubio on CNN last night? I saw part of it. Saw I was I was working and then just turned it on and saw. How's that work? Does like other senators text you like, yo, yo, he's yo, getting yo, flamed. Yo, on CNN yo, KG, <laughs> on CNN. yo, he looks like he's about to pee on him. Yo, yo, you watching this? Ah, yo, that Casey dude is flaming him. No, but I definitely do that with my team. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. So, yeah, no, I did. I caught right when he was getting absolutely crushed by that, yo that, that, that uh, young man who said, pledge right now that you won't take NRA money, and he yeah. couldn't do it. I Wait, was, did I you was watch like, that? It was like, I was, well, I was, I was disappointed. He should have said, yeah, I don't need NRA mo money. Yeah, I don't, but we do. I, they have an outsized influence. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. Yeah. He, I wish he had said that. When you replaced Hillary in the Senate, were you, was the, were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you like, yo, are these big shoes to fill? Like, yeah, know? yeah. I definitely felt like they were very big shoes to fill. Um, I, when I, I had been in the House for uh, one term, and I'd just been reelected. And when Hillary became Secretary of State, um, there were a lot of chatter about you know who could be, be appointed. And I wasn't sure, and I talked to my husband about it. And my husband's really terrific, because he simplifies things for me sometimes. And he just said, can you help more people if you're in the Senate versus the House? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I would represent 20 million people as opposed to 600,000 people. I would help a lot more people. He said, then you should at least try for the job. And so that's when I had to go through a big process and you know submit your name and go through an interview and stuff. And so that's why I put my name in. And it was a huge opportunity for me because um, really in the Senate, anybody can start a debate, stop a date, debate, shape a debate. You really have enormous opportunity to change things, even just through advocacy. Even if you can't pass that bill and Congress is so dysfunctional and the Senate's broken, but even if you can't pass the bill, you can elevate something and make create the pressure where someday you can pass that yeah. bill. And one example was just the 9-11 health bill, the fact that you know nothing had been done on that issue for over seven years, not even any hearings in the Senate, and I was able to work with the 9-11 first responders to come to Washington week after week, month after month, and speak truth to power in that way where they just said, I'm dying of horrible cancers because I answered the call of duty. Yeah. And it gave a chance for other senators to hear their stories, to absorb the pain they were going through and finally say, you're right, you do, do deserve basic health care because you shouldn't be going bankrupt because you did the right thing on 9-11 and the weeks and months thereafter. Did it feel wild to you to, 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 to have to push that through? It seems like it such an obvious thing to it, do. It seems right? so obvious, but the funny thing was that the day I, um, you know, Senator Schumer called and said, you know, this was something that Secretary Clinton had been in charge of, would you like to take this bill on? I was like, oh, yes, of course. And I talked to my team after, I was like, I'm gonna do the dial health bill. And my chief of staff just said, you have no chance of ever passing that bill, nobody cares. Mm. And, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna accept that. And we just have to do the 10 things you would do if you were gonna pass it. And let's just do those things, but we're not giving up before we even start. Yeah. And what really made the difference to me was the passion and the determination of the actual first responders. The fact that the community members, the firefighters, the police officers came, the construction workers just week after week and just, their stories were heartbreaking. Men in their 40s dying of really complex cancers yeah. that you wouldn't get to your 80 or 90. And having two children, three children at home, I mean, imagine just, 
again, suffering through losing everything you love and in front of your family's eyes and having no one helping you because you did the right thing. Right. That's, that's how painful it was. And their stories just changed everything. Mm. Damn. There's a lot of, um, like, mentally, I would say, inept, like, old white dudes in the uh, administration right now. Do they ever confuse you for Hillary? No. <laughs> What are you doing here? Why are you, why are you still here? You never get that? No, I, I don't I, hang I out. I won, I won. I, I don't hang out at the White House. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no confusion there. No. no confusion there. You were subtweeted by the President of the United States? Wow. I was. Uh, what did, wait, how did you? Uh, lightweight, son of that? Yo, wow. son, you trying to chill? You from New York over here, homie? He always has, he always has like the little adjective. Yeah, what like, is it? Said it? Are you happy with that? Was that? Uh, it's it doesn't, it's not even. Wake a little... up, we're just like, what is? No, he's no. at this at five in the morning too. He doesn't even use alliteration to insult you. Like he usually uses alliteration. Yeah, it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Did that hurt? Did you were just like, no. damn, he didn't even put effort into this. No. <laughs> he didn't no. spell crazy with a K or it was something. Not either Trump. No, it was it was clearly just a sexist smear. Mm -hmm. It was intended to shut me up. It was intended to. Uh, silence me, silence all these women who had just done a big press conference yeah, that was the day before, to too. Yeah. yeah, who told about the horrible stories of him harassing him, harassing mm -hmm. them and assaulting them. And so it was totally intended to silence me, silence them, silence any women who had been speaking out against him and what he was doing. And you know, obviously that did not happen. Right. So. As, as somebody who's had a career in politics, did you see this coming? No. During the election? No. You were like, no, uh, no there's no, no way. No, I, no. I did not, I was, I did not see it coming. You were just chilling, drinking a decaf, and you're like, yo, no, I, what is happening I here? knew the election was hard, and I knew that we'd have to work very, very hard, and I did a lot of traveling. Uh, I really wanted Hillary to win. Mm -hmm. I worked very hard for her to win. Um, but there was a lot going on in the, in the country, and, and then you have to add to all that other stuff, the fact that you've got Russians actively mm. trying to just create turmoil and discordance within our entire electorate. Um, there was a lot going on, and it, it was a, a tough election. This is wow! This is turning into a Jason Bourne movie before our very eyes. Mm. Does this feel normal yet? This, the way the government is working now? No, it's really dysfunctional, and President Trump is just failing to show leadership on things that really matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in this Russian inquiry alone, I mean, showing absolutely no leadership to say we have an election in 18. We have to make sure Russia or any other country can't attack us, mm. undermine our democracy. Right. Um, try to uh, sow hate and, and dissension within our communities. I mean, what, what happened is so outrageous, the fact that he's literally done nothing. It's, mm -hmm. it's his administration, and they're not doing the work to put in place the protections that we're going to need. Those sanctions that he's not... Anything. S sanctions to punish the behavior, but then how do you... Like, I have a bill with Lindsey Graham to do the deep dive to say, what are the 10 things that uh, we were weak on? What are the 10 things today that we need to fix? How do we prevent this from happening? As, as sort of like a 9-11 style commission to make those recommendations, but he should be doing that. Right. He should be bringing the, the states together. He should be bringing the experts. He should be talking to Google and Facebook and Instagram and saying, you were caught unawares. You didn't see this coming. You need to do better. You need transparency. You need accountability. We need regulation. That's the kind of thing we need from a leader, and right. we don't have it. So the rest of us are trying to do whatever we can to <clears throat> provide that uh, leadership that's not there from him. He's just like, sorry, my tea time is in five minutes. <laughs> You feel, your, your, your accent's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it Do sounds you feel like that it. America still respects affected officials? Uh, or has there just, yeah. because of Trump, no, they I, don't have the same respect for that and the FBI and the Secret Service and different... Well, no, like I that? think America definitely respects law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I think they respect the CIA and the FBI to do their hard job of protecting us from terrorism and all the other stuff they do every day. Um, I think that's true. I, I don't know how much respect politicians have gotten ever. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not really high on the list. Right. We're kind of bottom of the list. Next to lawyers, like, we're down. Oh, <laughs> I'm a lawyer and a politician, so way down. Yeah. But uh, I think he is affecting our stature in the world. Yeah. I think, you know, when you walk away from the Global Climate Accord, something that the world community was saying, let's deal with global climate change, let's, you know, do something together as as humanity, and for him to say no yeah, is, like, nah, is we're off that. Like, nah. it's, 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 it's not right. I like when it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants icebergs? Wow. They sunk the Titanic. <laughs> oh wow! I made you laugh with yes. Yeah. <laughs> so have you even convinced Trump and his people knowingly worked with the Russians? Uh, I I don't know. I I know that. Um, Bob Mueller is a serious uh, person who's mm -hmm. going to do a thorough investigation, and I think we'll have clarity. I think these indictments we've seen already, 
you know, are indictments for money laundering, indictments for um, uh, Russian interference. And so whether he continues on and sees there any other crimes that he's going to have indictments uh, that he believes have been committed, we'll see it. I, I believe he will get to the bottom of it. Okay. Is there like a plan for if, say, he's caught guilty and he's just like, no, I'm not leaving? Like. He doesn't have to leave. He, 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 an indictment is just you have enough facts to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, he cannot be prosecuted uh, as a president. Right. It would have to go through the Congress. And so the House would have to decide whether they want to pursue um, articles of impeachment. That would mm. be their decision. Man. Okay. You can't go to jail for the president? Um, no, it's, you can be impeached. So you, you, mm. you, and yeah, you, you can be held accountable, but it's a different process. So it's a very long process. Like, he's not just going to go, yeah. you know what I'm saying, see the it's judge. is like, yo, 20 yeah. years, get out of here, yeah. beat it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a different process. All right. What will it take to stop co large corporations from having such a powerful influence on Congress? So uh, I think we should have publicly funded elections is the first step. you got to get money out of politics. Right. And what we've seen, uh, corporate donations, uh, the amount of... Even the statements by New York politicians, Republicans, who said the tax bill was a way to pay back their donors, that they had to cut corporate taxes to pay back their donors. I mean, it just shows how much power these corporations overwhelmingly have in Congress. Um, there's no better example than the NRA, the fact that they overwhelmingly have this chokehold on members of Congress because of the money they invest, the way they you know, uh, speak to voters, the way they have this, this influence. Um, and so we should ban corporate money as one thing. We should have 100% transparency, no matter what's spent in a campaign. If you buy an ad, they shouldn't be able to spend dark money on all these you know, ads that don't say, hi, I'm Joe CEO of an oil company, or I'm Joe CEO of a uh, financial institution, whatever it is. Like, there should be full transparency sure, about who's ad. spending the, mm -hmm. so we don't have that. But ultimately, if we could get money out of politics and have publicly funded elections, you wouldn't have any uh, outsized influence of money. And that's, mm -hmm. that is the, I think, ideal if you can ever get there. But it's hard to get there because people who are in office you know, like they benefit them. from the current systems. Right. Incumbents benefit from the current system. So you got to get money out of politics. It's one of the reasons why I banned corporate uh, contributions this year from my campaign, because at least I can lead by example. At least right. I could do one thing, one small thing in the right direction. But, you know, it's a much bigger problem. So what How do you do when you, like, when you turn away all these big I just say I don't like take... Car washes, bake sales? What do you, what do, you do? Well, the grassroots is the answer. I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 the real revolution is coming from everyday people who are right. standing up and demanding action. And what's so exciting about this moment in time is that people are speaking out. People who had never been involved in politics are showing up at town halls, are doing marches. The Women's March, I don't know if you guys marched or saw it, but mm -hmm. it was remarkable. I mean, mm -hmm. it was global. You had people marching everywhere, and it didn't matter what your sign said. You you could march for Black Lives Matter, you could march for women's reproductive freedom or LGBT equality or clean air, clean water. It doesn't matter. Like you just marched and that intersectionality made so much um, sense to so many people because it showed we're unhappy with this president and what he stands for and we're going to fight for the America we believe in. We believe in equality. We believe in our diversity. Our diversity is our strength and they can all talk about that and bring that to their members. So if that grassroots activism translates into that low dollar giving to candidates, so so someone who's doing the right thing and speaking out and, and fighting for the things they believe in, that they you know send in a dollar, send in five dollars and it, it becomes a, a very huge grassroots effort, that's how you fund the best candidates. That, that, that's, that transforms elections because then those big checks are irrelevant. Right. Wow, you sound really presidential right now. Am I feeling, uh, I'm feeling a uh, KG Oprah 2020 ticket? Oh, huh? so nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm focused on my Senate race, which is in 2018, and I would like to be senator from New York. Please vote for me. Vote for, uh, vote for KG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or U.S. Senate. Um, so I'm focused on that, and I think it's important because I think I can do good things in the Senate. Okay. What's your so, motto for your... Uh, you got a slogan? You got a slogan you want us to come up with them for you? Oh, yeah, I love your ideas. Uh, vote for KG... She's good in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. That's it right there? Good, good in the hood. hood. In the I hood. like it. Yeah. Good in the hood. KG's good in the hood. <laughs> Senator, what would you like your rainbow to say? Um, speak truth to power. Speak right, truth to power. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Vote for her. KG. In the building. Good in the hood. Got the <laughs> right here, this is your this is campaign poster right here. Yeah. <laughs> Both KG. <laughs> You're watching the Decent Merrill YouTube channel, stupid. Click to watch more videos and clips.
Subscribe, please, please, please. Click and comment.